at a gay disco. Um, I think it was in Putney, wasn't it? Was it was a gay liberation front disco yeah. in Putney every mm. Thursday. Uh, he was a good musician, played the clarinet, and also a good dancer. And I like dancing. Well, I walked into the room and sat down, and she walked onto the stage, and my heart just... I couldn't hardly breathe. <laughs> and I thought, oh, she's so nice. And then she started talking, and I thought, oh, and she's so intelligent. <laughs> and I just had a massive crush on you right away. <laughs> Oh, he had a motorbike. So I, I, I had a, a small Triumph motorbike, and uh, we used to go out on that into the countryside in Hampshire. And Anne used to come on the back, which she liked. For colleagues, you know, we were in different departments at the same university, um, so we started meeting at the university to have coffee um, up, away from this choir, and we became really good friends. I got a phone call on the Thursday saying, I'm coming down from Cardiff to see you in London on Saturday. And I'd made other arrangements. And I thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> this guy must really like me. <laughs> so I literally went to meet him at Paddington the Friday evening. We had an hour together and he went and spent it, 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 his parents on London. So I thought, oh, he'd come to London just to see me. Mm -hmm. So the following weekend was our official first date. And we went to the Black Cat, as you do. We were actually in Paris. She was going to run the Paris Marathon, and we were having a, you know, classic romantic night walking around in Paris. And we were walking across the bridge, and she looked at me and she said, "This would be a good time if anybody wanted to ask a question." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, what kind of question might one want to ask?" And she said, "I think you know." So I ended up asking, but she was the one who said, "Maybe you should ask." <laughs> But when Martin bought, bought these rings for us, mm. I suppose about six months after we first met, mm. so I guess they were symbolic of something. I mean, he didn't get down on his knees or anything and say, I'm, but no, you still get to do that, by the way. My mother used to work for a jeweller in Liverpool, a very old firm called Morgan in Liverpool, and they used to make jewellery. And uh, we actually went to the works to look around and we had, uh, Anne had the choice of three rings uh, that they were making specially, so. In a way, we had our closest friends with us mm -hmm. uh, and it was the state acknowledging our relationship after so long. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want to live with anybody else. He's my best friend and um, he's, he's bright and, well, except when choosing partners, and, <laughs> and, and he still surprises me. <laughs> I think if my parents are both still alive, something they'd say was, they came back from Malta in March 1958, and we were married exactly two months later. We got married about a year and a half later in um, Canada uh, on my uncle's farm under a tent with both of our families there. I'm Canadian and she's British, but her family came over and we had a lovely outside wedding. I think only twice in my life have we had a row and I, my way of getting around that was to go off in the car and, and sit on a hill top. I and, can't remember and, that. Well, I can, and think about it. At different energy levels. She loves running marathons. I like staying at home and reading a book and cooking. <laughs> so, but it's complimentary, those things. Living together is different to falling in love. Um, and it, it's much stronger than falling in love. <laughs>